All right, this is section one, acids and bases, and so we're gonna talk about just some general properties of acids and bases and the definitions of acids and bases. All right, so the first thing we're gonna talk about is acids, just some general ideas of what acids are. And so first of all, we kind of have the general idea that acids taste sour. And so you think of things like lemons, citrus fruits in general, they, they just have that general sour taste. And so that's the general idea of a, as an acid. Kind of an interesting thing is that if you take um, acids, and actually this is true for bases as well, depending on the types of vegetables that you use, um, they change the color of vegetable dyes. Um, acids are corrosive. And what corrosive means is that it'll eat through things. That's why you have to be careful, like when, if you drink too much um, uh, pop, you know, like Coke, Pepsi products, stuff like that, because um, they contain carbonic acid, and so it actually eats through like the enamel on your teeth. Uh, so uh, corrosive just means it's going to eat through things that it, you know, it eats through, you know, like batteries. You see, like the stuff that sits outside of batteries is corrosive. Um, acids react with bases to form something called ionic salts, and remember those are just uh, things that are put together with ions and the other product is usually water Then you have bases bases are called alkalis and um, They usually taste bitter. I think of things like if you've ever had to take an antacid tablet like a Tums or a Maalox something like that. That's kind of the the idea of what those you know like a base would taste like um, or even you could classify it as a soap, if you've ever had to taste soap. That's what we're talking about. Um, and they taste, they're slippery. And again, kind of soap is a good example of that. We talked about the vegetable dyes already. Um, and again, they react with acids to form those ionic salts with the other product being water. Okay. We're going to talk about the definitions of acids and bases, like what truly in chemistry an acid is and a base is. And the definitions have changed over time as far as what they are and, and if you classify them as an Arrhenius acid or um, here in a minute we'll talk about a Bronston Lowry acid. The first person to really recognize the true what an acid and a base was, was um, Savante Arrhenius. And what he said was, um, Basically, he was doing experiments with electrolytes, which an electrolyte is just something that produces ions in water. And what he found from his experiments was he just said that if it produces a hydrogen ion, which we're also going to refer to that when we say hydrogen ion, something you might add to your notes, this is also a proton. So if something that produces a hydrogen ion in solution, we're going to call that an acid. So for example, hydrochloric acid, because when we put that in water, a hydrogen is produced, we're going to call that an acid. So basically if it has a hydrogen out front, you're good to go with an acid. Now, Arrhenius also defined a base as something that has an OH ion. And so anything that has an OH is a base and that it's in water. That's the other two key components. So it has an OH and it's in water. So notice NaOH, it has an OH, meaning that when you put it in water, it produces an OH ion. And that's why it's important that it's in water because it's going to have to dissociate and make an OH ion. It can't just be the pure pure salt by itself. It has to dissociate and make that ion. Um, it was a major, this was a major step in um, understanding acids and bases at this time. The thing is though, it's very limited because again, as we said, um, it's limited. So the key concepts with this is that um, hydrogen could only be an acid and OH could only be a base. So those are the things that you have to understand. And then, of course, the third thing is that these substances have to be in water. So, Arrhenius' definition is very, very uh, narrow. But then came along two scientists. Um, we have the Danish chemist 
uh, Johann Bronsted. Okay. And then we have the English chemist Thompson, Thomas Lowry. And they took what you could consider this definition of Arrhenius. I'll just put an A for Arrhenius, which is very narrow. And they widen it way out here where we would have the, I'll just put BW, BL for Bronson Lowry, to include a lot more. They, their acids and bases are going to include Arrhenius' acid, but theirs expand on out. Because their definition says that an acid is a proton donor. Meaning anything that's willing to give up a hydrogen is going to be an acid. And a base and this is kind of where it expands out. Acids don't change too much, but the bases, this is where it really widens it out. A proton, a uh, base is going to be a proton acceptor. This one, to me, is why we know, at least I hope a lot of us know, that ammonia, NH3, is a base. Well, according to Savante Arrhenius, ammonia is not a base. But according to the Bronston Lowry definition, NH3 is a base because NH3 is a proton acceptor. So I put an example down here. If I have hydrochloric acid, I introduce it to water. Hydrochloric acid is going to lose the hydrogen and water is going to accept it. So hydrochloric acid donates the hydrogen, so it's going to be an acid. Water accepts the hydrogen, so it's going to be a base. There's something that we've never talked about before. H3O plus is something called the hydronium ion. It's kind of just an interesting ion. It's just what happens when water becomes a proton acceptor. Water is pretty cool because it can act in either way. It can act as an acid or a base. It can donate a hydrogen and it can accept a hydrogen. It just depends on the situation it's in pretty cool. Okay, we have these things called conjugate acid base pairs. Um, and this is just where, you know, every acid and base has a pair, rather um, donating or accepting that single proton. So we have the acid, we have the base, and then what is the thing that is accepting the hydrogen and what's, ex what's the thing losing the hydrogen? So the conjugate acid is the species formed when a proton is added to the base. And the conjugate base is what remains when an acid molecule after the proton is lost. So I think the easiest way to look at this is just going down to the example. So I go down here to this example. So this is the same one we just looked at on the previous slide. Hydrochloric acid, we said, is the proton donor because it's going to take this hydrogen right here and it's going to give it away to water. Water is going to take this hydrogen. So hydrochloric acid is the acid and water is the base. Well, when hydrochloric acid loses its hydrogen, it now is only chlorine with a one minus charge. Well then that becomes the conjugate base because it's what remains after the acid molecule loses its proton. So what's left after that hydrogen goes away? Because remember the proton is an H plus. So you might even put that there. H plus is your proton. Okay. The water, however, is what it accepted the proton. So it went to H3O plus, which remember that fancy name for that is the hydronium ion. And so now it is the conjugate acid because it is the species formed when a proton is added to the base. All right. So we're going to work through some examples of um, conjugate acid base pairs. That All right, this is examples of conjugate acid base pairs. Um, which of the following represent conjugate acid base pairs? This is going to be like number seven on your homework. All right, so 
The first one I gave you is HF and the fluorine ion. And so basically what you need to do these is just look at it and say, okay, HF, it dissociates into a, a hydrogen ion and a fluorine ion. And so with this, HF is the acid. So when it dissociates, hydrogen pops off. And so when it pops off, remember that when you lose the hydrogen, this is going to be then your conjugate base. I'm sorry, conjugate acid. And this is going to be your conjugate base. And so is this a is this a conjugate acid base pair? Acid, conjugate base, yes. And that's what they're looking for. Do you have the pairs? Okay. Next one, NH4 plus NH3. Do the same thing here. NH4 plus goes to pop up a hydrogen. Hydrogen Oops, plus, I don't really need that there, sorry. And then NH3, again, I have an acid. I popped off a hydrogen, so there's your conjugate acid. I have left a conjugate base because that's what's left over when the acid lost a hydrogen. And so again, I have an acid conjugate base combo. Is this a conjugate acid base pair? Does it match up? Yes. So this is an answer. Look at the next one. H2O, HCl. Take H2O, pop off a hydrogen. When you do that, you get, it looks kind of weird because you think it would be HO, but we don't write it that way, right? We write OH like that. Okay. So this is your, oops. This is your acid, conjugate acid, conjugate base. Is this matching? And I didn't even have to label that to look. I don't even have HCl anywhere in the problem. So this would be a no. Okay. okay last but not least, I have H3O or H2O. Sorry. H2O. And then I have that hydronium ion. And I've already got H2O already dissociated up there. And again, look, do I have a hydronium ion? No. So this would be an example of no. Okay. So that's what they're asking for when they're asking for are these conjugate acid base pairs. Okay. All right. Now the next part. All right. Um, the next part is going to be like number 13 on your homework. And what they're asking for is write conjugate bases for each of the following. And they're giving you HClO4. And they want you to write a conjugate base for it. So this again is almost just like what we just did. All they want you to do is pop the hydrogen off. So I have H and when I lose that hydrogen, that acidic hydrogen, I have ClO4 negative. This is the acid. What is a conjugate base? A conjugate base is what you get when you remove the hydrogen. Conjugate base. So write the conjugate base. So what's your answer? This is what I'm truly looking for. ClO4 negative. Okay, try another one. H3PO4. Um, and then, now this is, you got to be careful with this. Remember we talked about this is a triprotic acid. If I pop off one hydrogen, I get oh, plus H2PO4, 2 minus. And so acid, lost a hydrogen, conjugate base. So this would be the conjugate base. So notice all I'm doing is losing a hydrogen. The charge is becoming, um, I'm sorry, this should be two minus, it should be a one minus because all I did was lose one hydrogen, so it's making it a negative charge. And so 
you know, notice that's all I'm doing there. Try one more. H3 and kind of a weird one. And it's already got a positive charge. Okay, so I take that, take this, and I pop off a acidic hydrogen. Now notice it had a positive charge, or move it a positive charge. So now it's actually going to be neutral when I write this new one. Now again, this one, where do you pull the hydrogen off? The acidic hydrogen is going to stay here at the end, so you're going to pull it off the end. So just pull that acidic hydrogen off the end there. And so again, here's your here's your acid, here's your conjugate base, and there's your answer. Okay. All right. Next part. The next part is we have to find, for examples, in each of the following chemical equations, identify the conjugate acid-base pairs like, and this is going to be like number nine on your homework. So if you have a reference. All right, so they're going to give you an equation. So like NH4 plus plus H2O yields to produce NH3 plus H3O plus that beautiful hydronium ion. And what they're going to do here is they're going to have you go through and basically label everything. So they're going to go through and you're going to say, all right, what is this? This is the acid. What is this? This is the base. What is this? Well, this is what resulted when I lost the hydrogen so this has to be the conjugate base. And what is this? Well, this is what resulted when it gained a proton. So this has to be the conjugate acid. And then you have to group them. Well, the acid goes with the conjugate base. And the base goes with the conjugate acid, like such. So you're going to do those things on your homework. You're going to write the equation, you're going to label acid, base, conjugate base, conjugate acid, and you're going to group. Okay. Let's try another one here. Number dose. So we'll take some acetic acid, C2H3O2. We're going to add some good old high quality H2O, which you'll find is a very common thing here. And something else you're going to see a lot in these equations are these double uh, arrows, uh, especially with some of these weaker acids. And I should have had one up here, too. Uh, very common in these weaker acids just because they don't sit, they sit in equilibrium, meaning because they don't go all the way to completion because they're not strong acids. Um, all right, so again, we're going to label. Let's do some blue this time for funsies. All right, so acetic acid, HC2H3O2, you know this is an acid. Um, okay. And again, you can start identifying what, what the acid was. Let's go over here and see, okay, where did the hydrogen pop up off of? Look, this is where uh, the hydrogen left, so that must have been the acid. This is where the hydrogen went, so this must have been the base. Again, this is the thing that lost the acid, so this has to be the conjugate base. This is the thing that accepted the acid, so this has to be the conjugate acid. And then again, group them. These two go together. These two go together. Easy peasy, right? Okay. Alright, one more thing, and you can shut me off. Not that some of you probably haven't already. Okay. A different color here. Um, use that one. Why not? All right. Last but not least, this is going to be like number eleven on your homework. All right. That was weird. But write the conjugate acids for each of the following. So we did earlier where you had to write the conjugate base, but now we have to write the conjugate acids. So the first one they gave you is HCO3 minus, and they want you to write the conjugate base. All you have to do for these is just is add um, a hydrogen to it 
And so then you get, once you add the hydrogen, you just add that hydrogen on. Um, it's always going to go up here with the other one. So like I said, notice we have a hydrogen up here at the front. H2CO3. And so this is your conjugate acid. And this is the answer we're looking for. All right. And then here's another one, bromine. <coughs> All right, and then so bromine with a negative charge again, add a hydrogen if it's conjugate base that are and a conjugate you're making a conjugate acid, and so again add it to the front, HBr. So notice you should be getting acids here. So it's another conjugate acid. Okay, last one. plus H. Alright, and then again just add it to the front there. H B L O 2. Alright, and then that's your conjugate acid. Alright. So that should be everything that you need now to do your homework. I think we would